A woman's menstrual cycle has an impact on every aspect of her life. It can influence how she's feeling, her motivation, energy during workouts, her appetite, cravings, creativity, and more. One aspect less understood is the influence of a woman's menstrual cycle on her metabolism. This is something that I talk about frequently in my coaching groups. Imagine understanding your body so well that you can plan your nutrition and workout around optimizing your metabolic activity according to what stage of the menstrual cycle you're in. What's awesome is the science is just beginning to understand the connection between a woman's cycle and her metabolism. A woman's menstrual cycle is divided up into multiple phases. The average duration of most women's cycles is 28 to 30 days, and this can differ from month to month. It's important to note that the information that I'm talking about, I'm referring to women with very regular periods. This does not apply to women in menopause, with premenstrual syndrome, polycystic ovaries, or women who suffer from irregular periods. The same goes for women who take hormonal contraceptives of any kind. These can play a role in changing how hormone levels are chemically in the body. A woman's menstrual cycle is controlled by a very complex communication between the brain and the ovaries. Within the brain is the hypothalamus. This brain structure is responsible for activating its neighboring structure, the pituitary gland. This gland secretes two hormones called FSH and LH, which send a message prompting the ovaries to produce hormones like estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone. As far as the research goes, the impact of the menstrual cycle and metabolism is something that's only beginning to be understood right now. A large portion of research performed in the past has been based on looking at men and women in the same way. However, today we understand that this is just not true. The difference in hormonal behavior between the sexes are vast, and the consequences of these differences means that metabolism behaves differently for women and men. That being said, with new research, we're beginning to understand how the female metabolism responds to different phases of the menstrual cycle. The type of metabolic fuel that your body is using will depend a lot on insulin sensitivity. When a person has a high insulin sensitivity, cells can utilize blood glucose more effectively. Research shows that estrogen has a significant impact on insulin sensitivity, meaning that by knowing where you're at in your cycle, you can control the influence of this phase on your hormones and in turn, your insulin sensitivity. By understanding your changes in fuel oxidation, meaning whether you're burning carbs or fat, you can plan the way that you and your workouts are according to your cycle. Therefore, it's going with you and not against you. Let's break down the menstrual cycle and talk about how you might think differently about your nutrition and exercise during these different phases. Phase one is menstruation. When an egg is unfertilized, a drop in hormone levels occurs. Because there is no pregnancy for the uterus to support, the thick endometrial lining gets shed over a three to seven day period. Due to decreased energy, this is a good time to focus on low intensity movement like walking or yoga. Since you're losing blood, focusing on iron rich foods like liver, meat, and eggs is also a good idea. Then let's move on to phase two, the estrogen phase. The follicular phase starts with the first day of menstruation and ends with ovulation. The hypothalamus prompts the pituitary gland to release the hormone FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. FSH stimulates the ovaries' tiny follicles, and these follicles contain the oocytes or the eggs. One follicle would become the largest dominant follicle. As a result of the growth of these follicles, the uterine lining is prompted to thicken to prepare for a possible pregnancy. When it comes to exercise, this is your time to shine. You should take full advantage of the estrogen in the gym. Try doing high intensity interval training and heavy lifting. This is the perfect time to try and hit a personal record. You'll find that you feel strong and you recover well. Due to the estrogen though, you do have great insulin sensitivity and fat burning capacity. Now let's move to phase three, ovulation. The ovulation phase occurs when the mature egg is released from the surface of the ovary. This generally occurs around the middle of the cycle and around two weeks prior to menstruation. A sharp rise in FSH and LH triggers ovulation. The egg is then released, travels through the fallopian tube to the uterus. The egg will survive around 24 hours unless it's fertilized by sperm. At the time of ovulation, the body becomes less efficient at fat burning and hunger will start to increase. Avoid endurance training, focus more on moderate intensity workouts during this time, and focus on nutrient dense animal foods or very slow digesting complex carbs during this time. Now phase four, post ovulation. Days 15 through 23 of a woman's monthly cycle are the post ovulation phase. Although estrogen starts to increase again, progesterone is the dominant hormone in luteal phase. Progesterone's only job is to support the endometrial lining to wait for a fertilized egg to implant. 
Additionally, the fat cells and the small intestine release less leptin in the luteal phase. Leptin is a hormone that tells you when you should stop eating. So this means that a woman's appetite is increased, preparing her for a possible pregnancy. Due to the high levels of progesterone, you become very insulin resistant and blood sugars can become unstable. You're prone to proteolysis during this stage. So you want to prioritize protein in the luteal phase. Food cravings will run rampant, so plan your meals ahead of time to avoid temptation. The good news is your metabolic rate is actually increasing, as reflected by an increase in your basal body temperature. When it comes to training, consider lowering your intensity. And now the last phase, five, the premenstrual phase. This phase develops within the last few days of the cycle and is characterized by significant drops in estrogen and progesterone levels, which will trigger the next period. Appetite continues to increase until the menstrual cycle starts, and many women will have more emotional ability as well during this time. After the first day of bleeding, it all starts over again. The goal of today's video is to help you learn about your own cycle. A great way to do this is to either keep a diary or use something like a menstrual tracker on your phone. There's plenty of free apps out there that you can use, and it helps with prediction of your period, prediction of ovulation, and gives you useful insights about the phase that you're in. Understanding where you're at in your monthly cycle can help you understand how to plan your workouts and prepare for those difficult binge feelings or cravings. Preparation is one of the keys to success when it comes to weight loss and maintaining good metabolic health. Because the biological process behind a woman's menstrual cycle is so complicated and individual, science still has a long way to go to providing individualized breakdown of the impact of your cycle on your metabolism. However, that doesn't mean you cannot use your own knowledge and your own science and gather your own information to be prepared. Personal tracking both with Lumen and cycling on an app are a great way to explore how your body responds to your choices. Just remember, the power is in your hands and your breath. I want to show you guys how I use the Lumen in the real world. The cool part about Lumen is it's unlimited testing. So you can test when you wake up in the morning, you can test pre or post meal, you can test pre or post workout, you can test every single day of your menstrual cycle. So Lumen looks like this, it's got a cap on it, it's got a nice little carrying case, it's completely rechargeable, and I'm going to show you actually how to do a breath into the Lumen. So you simply just open up your Lumen app. It's gonna give you step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. The first thing that we're gonna do is turn our Lumen on and you're gonna see this circle that lights up and it's just initializing my device and connecting it by Bluetooth to the app. We're gonna go ahead and click let's go. And we are gonna go ahead and uh, it's just warming up my Lumen. You're simply going to breathe uh, into the Lumen so it's inhaling deeply through the lumen. Ready? So now it's gonna go ahead and analyze the breath. It's super simple. It gives you the instruction, tells you when to breathe in. It has a countdown on it that tells you how long to hold it for. And then you simply breathe that breath out through the device at the pace. It also has modes in here that you can practice. So you can kind of get used to using the device and how that works to breathe in and breathe out. Okay, so it's gonna have me do one more. and it's gonna go ahead and analyze the breath. The Lumen app will get to know you better and better as time goes on, and it's gonna be able to tell you if you're utilizing carbs or fat as an energy source. So right here, I got a level four, so I'm more on carb usage, burning mostly carbs right now. So go ahead and check out the Lumen, fully rechargeable, test as many times a day as you want.